Hey guys, Chris from NGG here, and today on Tech Tuesdays, we're going to be talking about the archetype Infernoid and why I think they are a good choice for this format. If you've been a long term liker of us, you know I have wrote at least two articles on this archetype. Uh, but this format in particular, I do feel is a very, very strong anti meta choice, and I seem to not be alone. Because Red Infernoid has taken a couple of tops, a couple of people I know have taken up the deck uh, just because of its immense blue eyes and PK fire matchup, but I'll get to all that later. Um, so if you haven't played the deck before, you're probably thinking what the bloody hell is Infernoid. Uh, so I'll go over like the main types of it. You've got the small ones. Infernoid basically banish themselves, each other, uh, from the grave or hand to special summon themselves. So the small ones can only be special summon in the hand. Um, whereas the bigger ones can be special summoned from the hand or grave. Uh, also the smaller ones, i.e. level 4 or lower, uh, on your opponent's turn contribute themselves to DD Crow a card from your opponent's graveyard. That is the reason why I think Inferno are such a strong, strong choice because people are hyping up DD Crows, Ally Justice Cycle Raiders, stuff like that. Uh, because a lot of the decks uh, really suffer badly to you. Um, Taking away resources from their graveyard and interrupting their plays like that. This is why Infernoid is such a good choice. Like against Blue Eyes, uh, if they target anything with their re revival spells, you distribute, uh, banish. If they are all, all their eggs, their uh, stones in the graveyard, uh, when they're trying to resolve your name phase, or if they banish the target to bring something back, you can banish that target. So it really like. It makes like uh, the Blue Eyes deck plays really heavily from the graveyard. Uh, Infernoid makes sure that they don't do that. Uh, so it can simplify uh, just basically 3000 beast decks against your wide range of plays, which is pretty strong all in all. Against PK Fire, it's basically the same thing, like uh, take away Dante's, the Sir's about to target, uh, take away the Sir that Dante's about to target, and just strip away resources, uh, bait out like Fog Blade from the graveyard, um, the PKs, like if they're going to try to use a Boots next turn, etc. Et so like you just strip away resources, take away the grind game, because the grind game is from the graveyard. Um, and against like all the rest of the matchups, like you just even against like ABCs coming out, like uh, they're going to try and build up their graveyard, especially summon the Buster. So you just banish the, uh, all the graveyards to make sure that they can't play. So uh, that's the matchups uh, in a nutshell. Why I think it's good. Like I said, smaller ones are only during your opponent's turn. The bigger ones are uh, during your player's turn to contribute one monster on. Oh, sorry, it's one monster, not themselves. Contribute one monster. And your side of the field to uh, DD Crow your uh, your opponent's graveyard, so you can have like tokens or another monster, um, but that effect is once per turn. So uh, the bigger ones can do it in either player's turn, and they can come from the graveyard. That's the major differences between the two. Um, but the bigger, bigger ones are the bosses, and they are Anaku and Deviati. Um, Basically, the Infernoids are level locked. Uh, if your effect monsters uh, effect total level is eight or higher, you can't special summon any Infernoids. Uh, so to make up for that, the big bosses are indeed level eight and higher, uh, nine and ten. But to make up for that, their effects are really good. Uh, when he special summon, he's a dark hole. When he special summon, it's a, a heavy storm. When your opponent, uh, instead of a DD Crow effect, when your opponent is going to activate a spell or trap effect, you can tribute one monster in your opponent's side of field and negate it and banish it. Uh, he is monster effects, same thing, negate, banish. It is once per turn as well, so that's why it's really, really good. And uh, they can come from the graveyard, just like the uh, Systemus and the Tondo and stuff like that. So you, uh, obviously the deck is you mill, 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 set up resources to banish out. Uh, so that's like the main type of Infernoids, and the boss, kind of, or the best Infernoid is Infernoid Decatron. Uh, all the rest of Infernoids cannot be uh, normal summoned or set. Uh, they're going to be special summoned by their own ways. Decatron is the exception. Um, he can't be special summoned by banishing Infernoids, but what he does when he's normal summoned or special summoned, he sends one Infernoid from the deck to the graveyard, so i.e. you get your resources going, and he mimics uh, the effect of your send. So uh, if you go harm a deck, harm a deck's effect is you pop a monster. Uh, Decatron or will get that effect, and also its level is increased by the level you sent. So... Uh, it's a level 1 tuner, if it sends Harmon deck it will become a level 4 tuner. So that's obviously really good, that sets up a lot of synchro plays, which is obviously fantastic. Um, there's like a couple of different variants you can play, you can play the BA variant. 
uh, which I'm personally not a fan of, but obviously it rolls around Dante just milling lots, like your BAs and your Furnoids, like every mill will be pretty freaking good. And um, that's one of the variants, and the other variant is the Light Sworn variant, because obviously Light Sworns do a lot of milling, you've got Ride and Charge, uh, Lila, stuff like that. Uh, plus, he's a level 4 tuner, so you can make stuff like uh, Omega, who is a very good card in the deck because it puts Infernoid resources back into the graveyard, so you can keep summoning out all your Infernoids. Obviously, Ride and Help makes that. Decatron becoming a level 4 tuner helps make that, but of course, you can become any level tuner you want. So getting this out is pretty, pretty easy. Uh, so that's like the main types. There's also a Goyo Defender build, which revolves around uh, this little Infernoid, uh, level 1 Pyramus. And this, there's a spell card called Where Are Thou, that if you control level 1, you can search a level 1 uh, monster. So this searches this, to you summon this, send this, it becomes a level 2 tuner, level 2 tuner, level 1. Summon Goyo Defender, summon 2 more. Overlay for Levier to bring back a Banished Decatron, uh, make a level 5 tuner and sink into Crystal Wing. That's that's the main combo of the deck. Um, it's kind of gimmicky, but that's that's one, that's one of the variants you can play. Um, On to the sort of support that the Infernoid has. They have a freaking shit-all fusion. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to butter coat it like that. It's a shit-all fusion. What it does is when you activate it and while it's on the field... Uh, all your Infernoids become level 1, so i.e. it really helps with the level lock, that would usually uh, stop the Infernoids from doing their things. Uh, but any battle damage your takes half, but the Shadow Fusion effect is you attribute it, if your opponent controls an extra deck monster, you get to fuse one Infernoid fusion from your deck, and you can send up to 6 Infernoids to the graveyard to fuse it. Uh, and this is obviously the big, 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 big boss, the fusion. It, it comes off the Shadow Fusion. Uh, and it gets a multitude of different effects for however many Infernoids you use to fuse in it, but it absolutely needs the two big bosses we showed you earlier, the Inoku and the Deviati. Like, their requirements to fuse it, and then any other uh, ones. Uh, you can just keep sending the big ones so they can resurrect themselves in the graveyard. And then obviously its effects are like, uh, sent top three from your opponent's, or three from you and your opponent's uh, deck. Brings back banished cards into your graveyard, sends each player's hands to the graveyards, and sends cards from each of player's extra deck to the graveyard. So you can send more copies of this card to build up Infernoids in the grave. You can send more Omegas to trigger its upper effect to send stuff back into the deck, etc. etc. So uh, it's like a Zayborg type effect with that, which is pretty sweet. Um, the card that can search uh, the Void Imagination, the Shadow Fusion, is this card, Void Vanishment. What it does is you uh, discard one card to search one Void Spell. Uh, that Void Spell also includes Into the Void, so um, they have a searchable upstart golem, which is obviously kind of nice. Um, but it mostly searches the Shadow Fusion, and in addition, if your uh, Fernoid monster is about to battle an opponent's monster, you can destroy this, and both those monsters get banished. So even like Tiny Decatron can take on like a Blue-Eyed Spirit Dragon and just instantly banish it, which is pretty sweet. And uh, lastly, uh, Void Seer. This is their Forbidden Lance, I guess. Uh, you target my Fernoid monster, it becomes immune to all of our card effects. What's in the graveyard, you banish it, and it's a Return of the Dragon Lord effect, i.e. it takes the place of an Infernoid that's about to be destroyed. So that's kind of nice, that's like the good Infernoid support, there's other ones you can have a look at, but they're like the main ones you play. And of course, uh, anyone who's ever seen Infernoid, their main card is Reasoning, because seeing as they cannot be normal summoned or set, um, you activate this card, they call a level, and you keep going for all your Infernoids until you hit like a Raiden, or a Decatron, or if you're playing the BA variant, or whatever else. So this this is their key card, it's at 1. Not because of Infernoids, but it is at 1, which hurt. Same again with Monster Gate. Both at 1, but they're both like the best cards in the deck, that's why some people are playing Left Arm Offering. To search any of these two, banish two cards in your hand, you can't set for the rest of the turn, but you search a spell card. Uh, also, uh, return from a different, borrow from a different dimension, sorry, you put more Infernoid names back in to help your summons. So that's like the main non-Infernoid spell support. And like the extra deck, like I said, stuff you can play on like is like Omega, Instant Fusion, or Norden. Trish, you can go Instant Fusion, Decatron, and level 4, and the 
Probably one of the best cards I think in extra deck is Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend because this deck is really aggressive so being able to make this and just push and punish your opponent is so so good. So yeah that's why I think Infernoid is a pretty strong choice for this format. It's like I'm not saying it's like a meta deck it's just a really strong anti-meta choice that I would definitely consider playing if you're not a fan of the decks that are in the meta right now or you really just want to defeat the cards in the meta right now. So yeah, tell me what you think. If you like the video, please thumbs it up. Uh, like the page. Uh, tell me what you think of Infernoid if you like them. Uh, but for now, this is Chris from NCG signing out.